Welcome to the Friday final. Nice to have you with us on another busy Friday night. Could the Reds be closing in on a deal with an all star? And we'll look ahead to a big college basketball weekend with Xavier and UC both at home tomorrow. But let's start on the high school hardwood with an undefeated team from Ohio playing tonight. 15 0 Mason hosting Lakota West in a game in the Greater Miami Conference. Lakota's Jacob Beely runs into trouble to his left, comes back to the right. Nice shot in traffic. Here come the Comets, though. Matt Kings hits the trailer, and that's a three for Rodney Hutchinson. Off the Mason, miss now. Lakota pushing the floor. And Nail Mate pops it down for Beely, and he's going to lay this one off the window. That keeps West hanging around. Comets running now. Eddie Priest, nice little step through traffic move, and Mason goes on to win big tonight. 63-37, really big. Final score over Lakota West. At Moeller, 17-1 Elder visiting the Crusaders tonight. Big win, both the 2-1 in the GCL. Crusaders pushing the floor. Nate Georgetown got a speed tangle with Joey Sabato, and Sabato then runs the textbook 2-1-1. Pretty bounce pass. Frank Hoffmeyer lays it in. Moeller not going anywhere, though. Grant Pittman from the wing steps into one, bangs down a three. Georgetown now coming down the wing for Moeller. And he makes a good decision to keep it himself and puts that one in. Moeller wins by five tonight, handing Elder its second straight loss following that 17-0 start. In Kentucky, a two-game winning streak has Connor back above the 500 mark. They've been there most of the season with the exception of a mini January slump. But the Cougars have bounced back and could get to three games over with a win over Scott tonight. Scott Eagles 13-10 overall, but coming off a blowout loss to Covcat back on Tuesday. Jake Omer ahead of the field lays that one in with some contact for Scott. Time for Connor to dial one up from distance. Here's Jacob Barnes from the corner. Got it. Scott now swings it around in their half-court set. Comes to Vinny Dumlau and Vinny. Nice stroke. Knocks it down. Scott goes on to win by eight, 82 74. Interdistrict game for Highlands and Holmes. Holmes is 17 and 6 coming in, and Holmes is in transition. And take a look at this move. James Bolden to the reverse. He had 30 tonight. Holmes running once again. This time it's Markel McClendon. Nice show the ball fake. 16 points for Markel. Holmes tough tonight. The block on one end from Rod Avery. And Rod's going to do it himself. Coast to coast. Two of his 15 points also had 10 rebounds. Holmes beats Highland tonight, 68-57. Move over LeBron James. Franklin High's Luke Kennard scored 44 points tonight, moving past the King for fourth place on the state of Ohio's all-time scoring list. Kennard, who is heading to Duke in the fall, now has 2,652 points. And if he hits his average in his next game, he would pass Geno Ford for third place. Kennard is the reigning Mr. Basketball in Ohio and the odds-on favorite to win it again this year. It's been a rough week so far for Xavier, which suffered its first loss on the home floor all season. And it was against Creighton, which was 1-9 in Big East play coming into that Wednesday night game. Muskies trailed by 10 before fighting back to force overtime, but ultimately ran out of gas as the Blue Jays pulled away. That 10-point lead Creighton took made it a, all but a foregone conclusion because the Blue Jays are now 102-5 under this coach when taking a lead of 10 or more. It was one of those games which could be damaging to the tournament resume, especially if Vex lets it snowball tomorrow against Providence. They need to change the mood and do it quickly. We're certainly down after, after Wednesday's night, Wednesday night game, but we have to turn the page. And, you know, that's, that's the only thing that, that, you know, we need to worry about and we need to uh, figure out. Uh, I thought our energy was really good yesterday in practice. I thought our intensity level was really good. Again, we have to sustain that today, and then we have to be ready to go at 1 o'clock tomorrow. And it was a great win for Larry Davis and the Bearcats last night in Dallas over 23rd-ranked SMU. Unfortunately, no time to really enjoy it. Long flight home, practice today, and another home game on Saturday. But after that terrible loss to East Carolina, the Cats regained control, possibly over their destiny. The Bearcats play the best when they're doubted. You know, now we got a young group. Can they rise to it? Can they, can they take that challenge? You know, we, th this, is, uh, this group's going through every kind of experience right now. You know, we're going through the experience of, um, you know, winning a big game and how do you handle that after. We're going through the experience of, you know, losing a tough one uh, on the road that you didn't, you know, you kind of thought you were going to win. It's Saturday, February, College Hoops takes the stage. One o'clock for Xavier and Providence. 
NKU has a 7 o'clock tip at home inside the bank. UC plays at night, and UK will look to move to 23-0 with a win over Florida. National champion Ohio State is number one in a very early power index of college football teams for next season. The Buckeyes still loaded with many starters coming back, but will newcomer Mike Weber be with them? One day after signing day, his position coach at OSU bolted for the Chicago Bears. Now the state of Michigan's top recruit could be rethinking his decision. Stan Drayton, the former running backs coach, was considered a key reason for Weber choosing Columbus over his home state Wolverines. So when Drayton left 24 hours after signing day, it raised some eyebrows about the process. What did Drayton know? What did Urban Meyer know? And what, if anything, did they tell Weber? Weber has not asked to be released, but he might. NFL Combine later this month in Indianapolis, and Michael Bennett, Doran Grant, Jeff Hireman, and the deep threat Devin Smith are the four Buckeyes who have been invited to audition for the NFL scouts, coaches, and general managers. Combine is important, but it's only a part of what teams evaluate. But the event has been known to raise or lower a player's stock. Don't believe me? Just ask Vontae Burke. Here's a look at some of the other kids from the Tri-State area schools who will get a crack in the front of the NFL personnel people. UK also sending four players to Indy like Ohio State, while Miami cornerback Quinton Rollins will represent the Red Hawks. The NFL draft is in early May. Round two of the Farmers Insurance Open, La Jolla, California. Last week's winner in Phoenix, Brooks Kepka remains hot. Nice birdie. On five, he gets the seven under. Jot Vegas with a Pacific Ocean breeze at his back. The approach shot on three. This is going to set him up for birdie. He moves to eight under par. Hideki Matsuyama on the fairway on five. Wouldn't it be amazing if he holed out from Eagle here? I never saw these highlights. I'm just saying, if it happens to bounce and go in, and we, look at that. Only got him to one over, though. Harris English going to be your leader heading to moving day Saturday. The approach on the par 5 14. Sticks the landing. Two putted for birdie and a one shot lead. Harris is at nine under par.